The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is Cowboys Storyline with Nick Eatman. What is up? Welcome to Cowboys Storyline. Friday, January the 12th, the final one, final episode here before the actual game. And we're running out of things to say, honestly. I found I found that out last uh, yesterday and even on Wednesday. That the, the more we keep talking about it, the more uh, questions, you know, what do the Cowboys have to do to win? I mean, it's all right there. We kind of all know. And now they just have to go play the game. I mean, I, I, I don't remember any game like this all season long where by Friday it's just put up or shut up. It's just time to, to, to play it. Um, we've been over analyzing this thing, you know, from, from the start, uh, trying not to look ahead. Everyone keeps saying, don't look ahead, don't look ahead. And you can't, you can't look past the Packers, but you know, it, the, the hay's in the barn right now. I mean, it's, 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 it's time to, to play. So, um, this is, this is where we are. Cowboys Packers in the wild card round. Cowboys are the div- division champions. 12 and 5 taking on the 9 and 8 Packers. They've won three straight games to get here. Uh injury wise, I think the Cowboys should be fine. I mean they they've, they've got some some illnesses. You know, everybody seems to be sick at this point in the season, but but they're going to be fighting through that. Hopefully not a, a Zach Martin type situation where you know Zach Zach said he was on the training table for 5 hours in Washington the other day just just like a cocoon just he, he could not he could not do anything um uh and the question was would he have played in the playoffs and he said well it wasn't a playoff game so uh probably not actually but the good thing is is he's he should be ready to go he's kind of been uh getting himself back into the practice mode here and i, I would imagine he is he's ready to play packers have a few injuries there uh, a few guys on, on their on the end report that popped up so that um we'll, we'll monitor that as well but all right, 888-855-2297 is the number to call. 817-290-3298 is the text line. Let's get started. Stan in Birmingham. Stan, what's up? Hey, what's up, Nick? How you doing? How you doing? Don't have I'm a lot of Alabama, don't have a lot of Alabama calls. Uh, you might you yeah. might have been you, you you did call before, right? This is not your first call. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I've called before when uh when Nate was guesting. I think I think you might be the only Alabama call though that we have, honestly. Hey, we got a lot of Alabama fans, though. Alabama. I'm from Mississippi originally. So. Anything going on in Alabama like this week, like with the <laughs> no, no, not, football not, team? Not much. Not, it's a lot of mourning going on around. I here. bet. I bet. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. But uh, hey, I, I appreciate you taking my call. Sure. I've got a couple of things. I've been a, been a fan for a long time, um, and I just want to say this has been a really good season for me as a fan. Yeah. I've. I think this team has done what they needed to do on in many games. In mm-hmm. many games, you know, you want them to make that crucial drive. You want them to do a few things. They've done what they needed to do. And I, and as a fan, I appreciated that. Yep. Yep. I mean, that's good that you say that. I'm glad that, I'm glad that you, you, you mentioned that. I mean, like, and obviously, you know, this is just, we're just getting started. This is where everybody wants them to, to succeed is, is starting now. But uh, it has been a fun season. It's been a fun yeah. season for them, you know, wins and losses. It's been fun individually, you know, if, you, if you're if you into that kind of stuff like like I am, you know, records and things like that. I mean, it's been it's been a lot of fun to, to watch these guys and watch some of the great accomplishments that we've seen. Yeah, yeah, so I, I've thoroughly enjoyed the season. But here's one thing off the wall that I, I'm, I'm going to think positive, I'm going to speak life. We're going to win these next two games. I'm really hopeful that we win these next two games. We play San Francisco. Here's what I want to see, kind of off the wall. I want Lyle Collins, if he's 85% of what he used to be, I want to line him up in the backfield, and I want to punish Fred Warner and Greenlaw and let Tony Pollard run behind Collins for 10 to 15 plays, goal line, inside the 15-yard line. I just want to punish those guys. Mm-hmm. And if he's 85% what he used to be, like we, he used to pull and, and, yeah. and, 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 and just destroy linebackers and cornerbacks, Man, that would be a great sight to see. So that's just kind of some wishful thinking. Sure, I'm hopeful that it'll happen, but that's just kind of something off the wall I wanted to throw at you. Yeah, I mean, I could see like 
that you, I could see like a tackle eligible play, you know, as long as he reports to the uh, to the official, um, as long as he does that and everyone hears it, um, then yeah, I mean, I could see that being a play, you know, something that the Cowboys can kind of keep in their bag too. I, I don't know about this week, but but uh, yeah, you know, they could elevate him at any time, and and that's why you do it. It's why you bring these guys in. So oh yeah, I want to save him for San Francisco. Just just bring him in, surprise him. Uh, you know, I think Greenlaw and, and Warner are the difference. That's one of the reasons why our offense has stalled. And I think that I think we right. have to try to neutralize those two linebackers. But I appreciate you taking right. my call. Thanks, Dan. Looking forward to this this season, this is the end of the season here. Sure. Okay. All right. Thanks, Thanks Dan. Um, all right. Let's go to Chris in Colorado. Chris. Chris, you there? Yeah, I'm here. What's, What's up, man? Hey, good morning. Good morning. Hey, I just want to big fan, first time caller, but. Love you, man. Um, here we go. So anyway, yeah, here we go. Um, I just want to tell a quick story, and it won't be long, but just thinking about enjoying the ride and just want to give everybody a lot of good vibes and good mojo this morning. But, you know, talking about dads and football, I haven't missed the Cowboys game in 44 years. And, you know, the only thing my dad and I really identified with uh, each other on were, were the Cowboys. I remember – sitting underneath him on the couch. And if uh, Tony Dorsett had a good run on the first uh, first play, I'm like, he's going to make 100, we're going to win. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, the last time I talked to my dad was when the Cowboys won the first Super Bowl in the 90s, and we watched all these games together. And I was at college at Baylor, and we won. And I called him up, and I said, hey, Dad. I said, you know, we won. We won the game. And he's like, yeah. I'm like, what? After all this, that's all you got for me? Yeah, he's like, Hey son, don't you have studying to do? But uh, you know, then wow. then you know, I lost him the next morning. I swear to God, I know this is morose, but I I used to say that the happiness of the Cowboys went and I uh, finally got him. But uh, anyway, I, oh, I just wow. want to say, you know, well, let's enjoy the ride. We got this, and you know, I, from someone who hasn't missed a game in that long, there's a bunch of us out there. It feels good. I believe in this team, and how about them Cowboys? Let's do it. All it's, right. it's on. All right. Well. Uh, thank, thank you. Thanks for the call. And, uh, How about him, Cowboys? There we go. And he's also a first-time caller, so we'll throw that out there as well. Uh, there we go, Chris. Um, I, I think that was a sad story. The way you, I think the way you said it like that. Um, but yeah, I, I, it kind of brought me back too. Um, I, I remember that the same thing. I remember being with my dad, watching every game, um, every game um, until and then in the Super Bowl hit. Um, he had like he went to a party or something like that without me, but I remember getting him on the phone and talking to him. He was a little bit more excited, I think, uh, than that. But um, yeah, I remember the next year in the Super Bowl, I was like, "I'm coming with you. I don't care what party you you've got going to. I'm I'm pretty much an adult, so I can come. You know, I can come with you." So I did, and so I I, I was with him on the next one. But um, yeah, it, it's it's a special feeling for me that the the, the one that I remember is getting into the playoffs in, like, 1991, like that one, um, when they beat the Eagles to to make it to the playoffs. I thought that that was really a big one just because he, like, finally, after all these years, all these late 80s seasons and all that, to, to finally to win it, that was that was pretty neat. But you always remember those moments. All right. Uh, Travis in San Antonio is next. Travis. Nick, what's going on? What's up, Travis? I'm ready. Uh... Ready to go? I don't necessarily believe in curses either, but uh, I do believe more now than ever uh, as you get older in life, like positivity and putting good energy out there. And mm-hmm. I've had, like, I think I called you before. I'm I'm one of the, the Michigan guys, so I mean, Jimmy goes in, Eagles lose, Rams get two point conversion, we get the matchup we want. My Wolverines win, which I haven't seen it since '97. That was a shared title, so I mean, I'm I'm riding good momentum. So I'm. I'm not. Just gonna keep it I'm rolling, huh? Yeah. yeah. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna. Like you say, I'm just gonna keep enjoying it. You so, gotta enjoy these moments when these happen. So, do you feel like, oh wow, I'm getting greedy here. My luck's gonna run out, or you know what? Let's Hell just no. take the whole thing. Let's just take it all. This is my I'm, year. Yeah. Hey, hey, my buddy and I said, you know, we, we, he's a he's a Texas Longhorns fan, um, but he's he lived in Michigan, so he was a Michigan supporter as well. But he. He was like, I want to see you guys win one. It's been so long. And I said, and he was actually the one who said, like, hey, what if we just double dip this? Why not? Yeah. Why, why not? Why not? Let's double dip it. It's yeah. been so long for both. Let's just knock them both out in the same year. And I said, I'd be, I'll would be, i be good for the next 25 years, Nick. <laughs> well, um, it could be like Anthony in Miami that's like, I mean, I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm good. I, I've won. I've seen us win. 
to get both, I mean, imagine a bet, put yourself in my shoe. Imagine if you see Arkansas in that, and then you get like in the same year. That yeah, 1990, on. 1994. 1994, the, the off season of 94 or the, the spring, I guess, that was my greatest year because the Cowboys won the Super Bowl for the second time and then Arkansas won the basketball national championship against Duke. So that, yeah. So you, you feel it. So you know. Yeah, you can double dip. Yeah, you certainly yeah. can. Yeah. And I just, uh, so the key matchup, real quick, I think the key matchup in this game, it, I'm not, I, Jordan Love, respect him. He's played well this year, better than I thought. But um, he is still a rookie quarterback going in. I think the key matchup is, I think Hankins is going to do his thing, but it's the linebackers against Aaron Jones. If our linebackers, if Damone can keep what he doing what he did last week against Washington, keep that going, and Marquis Bell flies around, um, I think we have like our chances are really good. And I just want to say, I think it's going to be. I thought about last night going to sleep. Thirty-four twenty is what I have in my head. And yeah. Cowboys Nation, let's just let these players lace them up, buckle the chin straps, and let's play some mother freaking football. Okay. Um, it's Monday morning. I want Monday morning after this game to everybody be saying, how about them Cowboys? And have a good week, Nick. All right, man. Thanks, Let's Trey. go. Let's go. Here we go. Yeah, he's, he's riding high. Yeah, we might just be doing this all day long. Yeah. All right. Um, let's go. Um, phone lines are open right now, Chris. Uh, 888-855-2297. Um, I've got a text question here from Mike in Philly. He was the winner of our trivia question a week ago. He says, thanks again to you, Shelby, for a great time. Me and my son had a blast. I agree running out things to talk about. Uh, but have you noticed Micah getting involved more and stopping the run these past three weeks? That could be big in the playoffs. Uh, I have noticed that, um, and and he was asked a little bit about it. He was kind of, he didn't really want to mention too much, which is good. I mean, he was smart about it, but he uh, he was just saying it's all about matchups and trying to get, uh, you know, trying to confuse the quarterback a little bit and just and just the thing with Micah is that he can line up at linebacker and still rush the passer. You know, if you time it right, and you know that's the thing. Quarterbacks keep an eye on the time on the play clock as it's going down three, two, one. They can snap it. Well, linebackers and defensive ends can also see it as well, especially from the linebacker spot. You see it at three, two. You better creep up in there and you can time it just right to, to blitz. And so he's got that kind of acceleration to do that. So you know he's going to be he's going to be lining up at linebacker, playing some linebacker, lining up there, rushing the passer. He's they're just trying to move him around as much as possible. So that's kind of what's been going on. But yeah. Uh, really, really good stuff there um, uh, in in Washington. Uh, Mike was able to go, and uh, thanks to Shelby and and his uh, his dad Blair, I believe that that were there. And it was so nice to meet them. It was just cool that they were able to connect, and we got a photo uh, with them. And, and great seats. They had great seats right by the the tunnel. It was really awesome. So really, really good stuff. And I'm glad we we could help. It really wasn't us as much as it was Shelby for for his generosity to give those tickets away and then Mike and his his knowledge of uh Cowboys football taking it all the way back to like late 80s to 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 get that uh trivia question and, and get there so really good stuff all right we have two callers on the line Chris you working back there yes I am what's up so you got you got two guys on the lines, yes. right? So okay, we're good there. Yes. So um, you got it. Why don't you come in here? Why? Because I, I gotta I gotta okay. you gotta help me with stuff. So okay. move the camera right, and why don't you come in here oh, for a second? Hold on a second. Yeah. I got, I got, well, I can't. What, what do you mean? You can't. Well, I can't raise the the thing. And okay, okay, give me a second. Make okay. it work. All right, make, do your I'll MacGyver make, stuff. That I'll make you it work. Do give me a second okay? and make it work. Give me two seconds. All right, just so. chatter. I'm just going to chat. Yeah, I don't have a text line question. I don't want to go to a caller just yet. I want to kind of uh, figure it out. All right, here we go. We're moving moving things around. I can see that. All right, let's do some things here. Hold on. Just just bear with us a little bit here, okay? It's Friday. Bear with us. Crystal thinks coming in here. Um, we're going to try to do things different. You know, last week on Friday, we did the trivia question. We had to do some things different. There's Chris coming in here. All right, Chris. What's I got to take my badge off because we're getting the right. camera, okay? Give me a second. Give me a second. All right. Well, what's up? Well, it is a birthday here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Welcome to the show. Chris Beam is on the show. This is the first time I think you've been on your show. Yes. And 
It is. Look at this. <laughs> we got to go birthday. You know, it's Cowboys. Oh, it's playoffs. You remember let's, my birthday? I did. And uh, well, you know what? I felt that? like such an ass the whole time, all morning. Like, hey, let's go. Let's get let's get the show going. Let's go. You know, didn't say anything about happy birthday. <laughs> didn't say anything at all. I knew it was. So I asked you if Jazz was back there. She was supposed to help with that, but shocker, nah, she's not. She's not here yet. So welcome to the show. Thanks, buddy. Phones, and I'm I'm so glad the phones. They're not ringing because I, I purposely did this. I'm Brandon <laughs> and Dylan. They're both on the line. Are, Sorry, the hang, line. hang tight with us if you can hear us. But I had to go. Happy birthday! We had to do a shout out to, I to that, Chris dude. Beam. Yeah, he's always you, on the other side. You want to know who's going to be feel really bad about this? Who? The Talking Cowboys crew because they forgot. <laughs> well, <laughs> sorry. Sorry that they, they forgot, you know. I uh, really appreciate it, dude. Yeah, man. Dude, yeah. my kids are going to love this. Yeah. Are they here? Not yet? They're not here. They're not at here. school today. They've been in. There's Douglas Barraclo. He's back there. He's excited. See, Douglas yeah. could have been in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I got some knives and cake. I mean, oh, knives and yes. forks and all that. So we could share yes. with people if we need to, if you need to share. But uh, you know what? You're always in the back. You're always doing stuff. We had to put you in the front today. What do you What do you think? What's your favorite football movie? Let's do all that stuff. What's your favorite football movie? Favorite random player? Favorite player? All that good okay. stuff. Wrestler? All that stuff. Okay. Chris Bean, well, ladies and gentlemen. Well, Chris well Bean. my favorite wrestler, you know, I like the Iron Sheik. And, Iron and, Sheik? Who likes the Iron Sheik? But the, Nobody I, likes I had like the, the... The doll, yeah. The, you know, yeah, the, they the were figures. like rubber ones. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You, you had the ring and you just could like pull yeah. them back and, okay. and let them go. And like, and yeah, Hulk you go. Hogan, Hulk obviously. Hogan, of course. Cheeks of Come Death. On. Yeah, like, yeah, right? Hulk Hogan, yeah. And then, I mean, my favorite football movie is probably The Program. I know it's not on everybody's high list, but me and my brother. Yeah, I love went, that. To, went to the first showing of the program, and we love that. I love that. I movie. love that movie too. Now, and it's remember really, the Titans. It's really you can't go wrong. Too. It's a terrible movie. The program is kind of terrible, it's a terrible, but, but movie. It's, it's one of those awesome terrible movies. It's like over the top. The wrestling, the arm wrestling movie. They're gonna do. A, they got to do a program too, and it's gonna be all about nil. Oh man, yeah. <laughs> How awesome yeah. would that be, guys? Pulling up, right. So. so, and your favorite player of all time? It's yours too, Darren. Darren Woodson, because he's you, the best. Because day one, when I met Darren, I was an intern, and mm -hmm. and he asked me my name. I was like, yep. you know, Chris Beam, and he asked probably what you did. I mean, that's that's exactly that's the thing about Darren. He he, 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 he was like, gets what do you into do? Into your do? life, and how, you know yeah. that. And then every day you see him, just, he says your name and asks you how you're doing, and stops. Probably and, calls you Christopher, does he? Calls me I Nicholas. He, I think he does. Yeah, call me Christopher. Yeah, he's awesome. He's the so. best. Yeah, and, and more than just as a player. So, yeah. Well, when I was getting, I, I went to get a cupcake and I saw this and I'm like, oh, it's the playoffs. Okay. You know what? We gotta go. We gotta you, go all you, the way. <laughs> okay. I. You want to tell you? You want to hear a cowboy story? A yes. funny cowboy story? Yeah. Well, de okay. it's debatable if it's funny. It's I mean, a Jerry Jones story. Okay. It, it, then it is funny. Okay. So I used to produce Jerry Jones' TV show for probably about a good 10 years before mm -hmm. Nick ripped me away from it and brought me into the podcast studio. Mm -hmm. So one time it was his birthday. His birthday is on October, October 13th. 13th. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I was doing a show and it was his birthday. Okay. So I was like, we, we got to get Jerry a birthday cake. Okay. So I ran down the street at Valley Ranch. I went to the, there's like a, a um, Market Street or mm -hmm. whatever it is down there. Okay, a sponsor, whatever it was. Yeah, sure. So I go in there. I'm awesome. looking for a birthday cake, mm -hmm. and the only one that just went boom. What do you get? Jer what kind of birthday cake do you get, Jerry Jones? Unicorn. <laughs> I don't know. There was a football. Okay. A football birthday cake for Jerry. And we gave him. It was like a. It was like an ice cream cake. Did you like it? Oh, yeah. He was like, oh, let's cut it up. And, and he ate it right yeah, there? Yeah, right there. there I was like, go. here we go. Got you Jerry. felt good about that. I was like, I got Jerry Jones a birthday cake on his birthday. All right. A lot of people can't say that. Well. Well, I know you probably want to kick me off the show now. No, man. So I can go answer the phone. You're on. I mean, if somebody could hit the button back there, then we could we could take well, the call. I, well, I was going to do this for you. I'll just give you one. How about I do just one text message? How about oh, yeah, that? yeah. Look at this. Let's That's talk what I'm it trying through. to do here. Let's try to do That's it. why I asked you if Jazz was here. Jazz was supposed to help. She said she would be. I'm gonna just call. I'm calling out Utah right here on the show. Utah Jazz getting called out. She was like, "Oh yeah, I'll be here. Yeah, I'll be here for Chris's birthday." And she told some of the people from the Talking Cowboys crew to remind them that it was your birthday. So they knew. 
And they didn't say anything. <laughs> Someone from the text line says, happy birthday. The 609 says, don't feel too bad. I'm pretty sure they forgot Derek Eagleton's birthday as well. I doubt it. On, on Talking Cowboys. On, on the break? No, on Talking Cowboys. Oh, on Talking Cowboys. Yes. Yeah. So that, that probably yeah. happened. Right. Let's see. Uh, another question. When is Micah, this is from, oh, come on, scroll, 949. When is Micah going to get a holding call? It's so obvious he's being held on every play. Nick? March, March 14th. <laughs> they won't even be playing then. But, uh, no, I, I don't know. I, Do you think it's getting out of control now? I mean, I mean, a lot of people don't realize don't that the people, the, 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 the referees actually watch like video going into the game, just like a player does. Yeah. Do you think they see that and like that's a hold? Yeah, I, I, probably because he is getting hold. We see it. We have the photos. I mean, we get a lot of photos of the game. We see the hold. He sees it. He tweets them out. I mean, they're there. Um, but you know, he's. I, I don't. I really don't know. I mean, it's it's shocking at this point. And and I saw somebody somebody on Twitter put out like the great players in the league and their last holding call. And it was like Miles Garrett like two weeks ago. Right. Aaron Donald. Yeah. You saw that, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it's just like, they're all like two to three games ago. And <laughs> he's like, like October. Yeah. He's like, I mean, I mean, they weren't even, people weren't even trick or treating before the last time that he had a call. So, how about this? Mike and Denver ask you uh, about the Packers being overrated. I should ask, are, are you be, believing their positive momentum will make this a close game? Also, if any team in Cowboys history could do- – which team in Cowboys history could dominate the 49ers today, like the current 49ers? Mm. I mean, those 92, 93, 95 teams were, were pretty good, you know, because they could run the ball at any time. Um, you know, I said this on the show the other day about overrated, underrated. I mean, that, that stuff doesn't exist in the NFL for a team. You're not overrated. You're not underrated. You're just you're, they're nine and eight. They're in the playoffs, and they 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 can beat you if if you don't play well. So it's not about their rating. Their rating is irrelevant at this point. It's it's their can they win the game? And um, you know our team's giving them too much credit, not enough credit. Doesn't matter. I mean, like I, I can promise you this: if the Cowboys fumble the ball in the first series, or throw an interception, or get a punt, or field goal blocked, or something. And and it's ten nothing, fourteen nothing Packers. Then we definitely got a game. So um, they got to prevent that from happening. But I think if they can, if they can get the Packers out of their run game and make them try to throw it a lot, then I think, you know, I think they'd be in good shape. I think the fans are also looking ahead too. By the way, well, Kevin from Virginia, I'm jumping ahead. Can you see T.J. Bass moving to left guard and kicking Tyler Smith to left tackle next year? Oh, that's look, that's. Way looking ahead. <laughs> I thought you. we were like divisional round no, looking I'm ahead. Like off season. No, I mean, but that's that's something they've got to be thinking about. I mean, they got to be thinking, okay, what's going on with Tyron? Is he coming back again? Probably not. And then what? You know, they're not moving Tyler this year, but are they moving him? You know, after that. And then also, what does Lyle Collins have? Is he still? Ha- I mean, you picked him up for a reason. Is maybe he comes back next year? Maybe. I mean, that maybe he factors into the mix too. So, do you think T.J. Bass could be a better center? I would. I, he's got the exactly. body know, type. Biotis is is this his last yeah. year? So he's he's free agent. I got to figure that out. They got to figure that out. But Bass, I mean, you can't just. I, I can't remember. Has he played it? I I don't remember if he played it at Oregon or not. I don't think he did. I think when they line up, I mean, at training camp when we see it, the the the, the offensive guards who are the backups mm-hmm. will. Uh, line up and and do the practice snaps with all like all four right. quarterbacks are out there at, at training camp. And so he does that. And oh. he does that. And so does it. so is um, the other guard um, uh, Hoffman. Yeah, Hoffman. Yeah. So you know T.J. Bass, he actually played a lot at left tackle and left guard at Oregon. Started thirty four straight games at Oregon, mostly. So left tackle, guard. Usually, if you're a guard. Tackle. I mean, you're not really in the center, but six five three fifteen. I don't know. Uh, probably not six five three fifteen is probably not a center. But I mean, you got to learn it. You got to figure it out. You know, if you can do it in the off season, sure. But uh, it, there's there's a future for T.J. Bass. I think they were really excited to get him in free agency because they they had like a fifth round grade on him. So yeah. for him to to be there after the draft, that is surprising. All right, so. you ready? you want to get some right. calls? Let's do this. All right, let's keep All right, this right here. Back. 
keep it here. This is our little centerpiece that no one could see, I guess, but that's okay. All right. Chris Bean, ladies and gentlemen. Good stuff. Now he's back to work. We're going to go straight to the phone lines when he's in there and moves the camera back around. Apologize for the guys waiting, but it had to happen. Chris is a, such a huge part of the show. He's done such a great job to help me kind of get this off, get this off the ground. It's really been amazing, and uh, you know, you guys don't know, you know, the calls and the the text messages that he gives to me sometimes late at night or early in the morning, just an idea here and there, and what if we did this and that. And he does that for all the shows, not just this show. Does that for all the shows as well. So he really is um the producer of, of the podcast and, and just does does an amazing job and i really i'm very appreciative so definitely want to wish chris a happy birthday for sure all right let's go to brandon in fresno california thanks for waiting brandon appreciate that what's going on nick how you mm. doing good good happy birthday to chris b man he That's looks right. 21 yeah yeah <laughs> yeah he is first, yes i am his first time on the show i, I think he needs that here we go i think so too <laughs> Chris, you can hit any button you want back there because you're running. You're running the shows, yeah. So yeah, yeah. so no, nah, just calling in, Nick. Man, I'm excited for the game. Super pumped up. I got all my flags hanging up in my living room. Super pumped up. Been trying to call for the last couple of weeks, but uh, wanted to talk about Micah. Okay. I know he's been doing better in the in the running game, but mm -hmm. I noticed when he's on the on the edge that he tends to spin inside, and I feel like running backs see that and they bounce on the outside. I just kind of wanted to know your take on that. And then, as a kid, I remember this one game, and I believe it was Dion against the Bengals, and he caught the ball, like, on the one-yard line, and he did the splits or something like that. It's just kind of like a vague memory. I just wanted to see if you could remember that. And then, lastly, a uh, player, I always give you one, um, George Teague. George I just kind of want that vibe. That when when T.O. went on the star and somebody yeah, hit him, I want to go star. in the playoffs just like that. All right. All right. Awesome. I I I don't remember that that Dion play um against the uh the Bengals. I, I in fact I can't even remember Dion and them playing the Bengals. Um I, honestly. It's like a vague memory. It's, I I, I could have swore it was the Bengals. It might have been the Broncos. I don't I just I just remember them throwing it like last play of the game and he's like at the one yard line, he did like the splits and like we we didn't get in. Yeah, oh, he, a big... he didn't get it. He was on offense? Yeah, he was on offense. And he got tackled at the one, didn't get in? Yeah, he didn't get in. Oh, that's kind of ringing a bell. Yeah, but I can't, yeah. I can't it's, remember. It's a while. It was a while, a long, long, long time ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So something I just I wanted to throw at you, see if you could remember. And then also I have another one just real quick. I, yeah. It's a, a preseason game. Mm. Uh, we're playing Pittsburgh. And I don't know if it was Darren or... Roy Williams, but they hit, I think it was like Plaxico Burris, and they like, that was when they were doing, he got jacked up. And oh, like, yeah. I just remember that. I, I just I just don't remember who it was and what preseason that was, because I always try to look that one up, because that's a memory me and my brother had shared. Well, they, they played Pittsburgh in 2003 in Pittsburgh. They lost 15 to 14. And so that would have been a year that Woodson played and, um, and Roy Williams played. Uh, and, the, and it was the third game, so it might have been like a dress rehearsal type game. So it was possible that that happened. I can't – again, you got me on that one. I don't exactly remember that one. <laughs> For sure, Nick. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Have a good weekend, and let's All right. get this dub, man. Let's All right. Get this dub. Let's, let's do it. Appreciate appreciate the uh, call for sure. Let's go to Dylan in Northport, Florida. Dylan. Hey, Nick. How's it going, man? Good, man. How are you? Good. I haven't been able to call. We've been on a business trip. I've been having some like storyline withdrawals, so it's oh. nice to be back on here. Yeah, let's get in here. Let's get it going. What yeah, you... dude. First off, I uh, love Anthony's attitude from Miami. He's like the yin to uh, Vegas Rob Yang. Like the, They perfectly balance each other. I love it. Yeah. And they're both excited this week, just like everybody is. Everyone's excited about what's what's in front of them. Yeah, and for different reasons. That's kind of the purpose of my call is why I'm excited. Uh, you know, somebody called yesterday, the day before, talked about how the Cowboys are top five in all three phases, offense, defense, special teams. That's cool. We have player of the year candidates in Lamb, Bland, and Michael. Dak's playing the best ball of his career. But what's really got me excited is the schedule, is the lineup here. It's, I don't think we've had an easier path to that NFC championship since – Uh-oh. I won that game if Creighton runs his route right at the end, but whatever. I won't uh, digress on that too far. Makes me too sad. Um, 
but if Dallas can beat Green Bay, and I think the Rams have a great shot at beating Detroit, I mean, you're going to play the the Bucks or the Eagles potentially next week at home. I mean, that's a 95 percent chance you're going to win that game, I'd say. So, just excited about their team overall, and really, I think this is the first year in a long time where there's just not like a dominant team until that NFC Championship game. So, I think we're in good shape. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll see. You know, I, I you got to remember too that like. If you win this game, anything that happens the next week, you're playing somebody that that has got some momentum as well. You know, I mean, that's that, that you know, you can say, well, the Lions, you know, they're they're uh, they're a young team or or whatever. But you know, if they if they win the, this first game, you know, and then they're coming into town, they're they're coming to town with some confidence. Same with the Eagles. You know, you, where now you're thinking of the Eagles as a team that's struggling, can't even beat the Giants or, or whatever. But you know, you get you get them on the road and they beat Tampa and then they come to town or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So whoever you play, whatever it is, whoever you play is going to be somebody that won the week before and is getting a little bit of momentum going. So um, I, I don't know about an easy road. I know what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. But I think at this point, they're all going to be, it's all going to be a challenge. Every game, everything is going to be a battle. But I hear what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. I think I don't know if I'm still on it, but I think this week is probably going to be the most difficult game with Jordan Love playing the way he's playing. But he's also kind of a gunslinger man, and he throws that ball off his back foot and does this crazy stuff. Yeah, and this is an opportunistic defense, so I think they got some chances here. As long as they can put a kibosh on Aaron Jones, then they have a chance to make some plays against this quarterback. Sure, I mean gunslingers are 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 scary, you know. I mean because if they're if they're slinging it around and throwing it to their team. They could be problematic. We've seen it with Brett Favre. We've seen it with Tony Romo. We've seen it with whoever else you want to put in that in that category. I mean, you can put Mahomes in there if you want. You know, when they're when they're in their bag doing doing their thing, it's tough. But sometimes, you know, you get greedy. You know, home run hitters strike out. So maybe one of those type of things. For sure. Yeah. All right, all right man. That's all I got for good, you. Thanks. Good stuff, Dylan. All right. Uh, I do not see Chris. We don't have any other callers right now. We good? Got any text message or anything? No. He's maybe on the all right. phone. I'm sorry. I'm, I'll type it in. Sorry. You got someone on the phone? All right. God, I'm working. He's working on it. You're back there. Um, no, I mean, I, I'm just so hesitant to say, like, easy road. But I know, I know what, Dylan, like, I know what you're saying. I mean, I, I get it. It just kind of, you probably saw my face there. Like, I don't know about by saying that because I just don't think anything is going to be easy. And, this team doesn't, even when it is easy, we, they, they seem to kind of make it somewhat difficult as well. So um, it'll, it'll, it'll be a challenge. But the, the point is, is, is they're, they are favored at this point to go to the NFC Championship game. That's what the experts say, that they will win this game at home and that whoever comes to town the next week, they would also be favored to win the game as well. And to go to the championship game. And that's probably something we just haven't seen in a while. And even when they were the number one seed back in 2016, it obviously favored to go there. You know, there was a lot of, there was still some doubt. You know, this is Dak's rookie year. You got, you know, a very young team. Can they handle the pressure against a, a veteran team like the Packers and, and Mike McCarthy and Aaron Rodgers and all that? And, and they weren't able to handle it. And we saw right off the bat they were down 21 to three, and then had to fight back, fight back to tie the game. But then, then they lost at the end. So, um, you know, inexperience, you know, I think I thought hurt them that day. And uh, you know, it would only be ironic or coincidental or whatever you want to say if if it, if it all went full circle. And here's McCarthy coaching veteran Dak Prescott against a young upstart Packers team. Uh, with a lot of guys that have never played in the playoffs before, and maybe and maybe uh, turning the tables on them. That would that would on, only fair, only fair if it happens like that. All right, Brian in Kansas City, what's up? Good morning, Mr. Eatman. Good morning, Brian. Hey, man. Hey, you know this is I got a I got just two things for you today. I, I got a pretty high confidence level, but you know the last time I had this high a confidence level, I don't know what year it is, but you sure damn well. Uh, was the year Romo went 13 and three. We had the first seed in the giants who Cinderella everybody all the way through beating the undefeated Patriots. Yeah. You know, came in. That's the last time I looked at this and said, Hey, I think we might be the best team out here. <laughs> right. You know, and I was looking at that, not against the Patriots. I you know it would, it, no matter how big a Cowboys fan I am, I always looked at, at 
Brady is is a little bit of a unicorn, mm-hmm. you know, kind of like a Michael Jordan, you sure. know. Um, hey, so I got some Green Bay Dallas trivia for you. All right. This one's a little more modern era, so I think you, you, you probably will remember this one. So January 8th, 1995, divisional round. Four Cowboys, so we, we blew the Packers out of the water. Four Cowboys scored that day. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give you the two household names and then ask you for the other two because they're not household names. Okay. All right. The two household names are Emmett Smith and Alvin Harper scored that day. Who were the other two Cowboys that scored? Man, Emmett Smith Al- and Alvin Harper scored. So this is the 94 season, right? Yes, yeah, sir. 94 season, first or the second week of, of January. I'll stay on until you get the answer. Um, I'll tell you. I, I, one, one of the answers is, um, is, is Blair Thomas. Yes, sir. All right. The backup running back, Emmett, was kind of banged up. Blair Thomas, I think, scored in that game. And then at the, in this, and then I'm just going to have to take a stab, honestly, because it's like, it, I mean, it, it could be Kevin Williams, but I, I doubt that's him. It's probably going to be a a tight end or some. Is it? I, You're on it. Is You're it, on it. Is it Can uh, you remember who it was? Is it? Um, I'm going to guess, is it Kendall Watkins or Hayward Clay? I, one of those two. That would be my guess. No, sir. Scott Galbraith. Scott Galbraith. <laughs> Dang it. Dang it. All right, man. I'm going to hang good. up and let everybody else contribute. Have a great one. Appreciate that. Good question. Yeah, and the Harper touchdown was like 95 yards or something like that because when I tweeted out the other day that this was the third longest play in Cowboys history, the 92-yarder to, to CD, a lot of people were like, whoa, whoa, what about 95 to Harper? Which, that's just the way that, that they they don't put playoffs in the same as, as regular seasons. They just go in their own category. So, yeah, the, the 95 or 94 was one of those. Um, the touchdown to Alvin Harper in the playoffs uh, was probably one of Aikman's best throws. Just unbelievable throw to Harper but in, in that game. So, cool. Maybe the Cowboys can – can score four touchdowns like that again and uh, back up running back and a tight end and all that. Uh, that would be awesome. All right, let's go to um, Ali in Florida. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How you doing, man? Pretty good, buddy. How are you? Great, 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 great. A uh, couple of things. I'm going to have a few uh, opinion, and then I'll have a trivia for you. Okay. Okay. I heard on the show the other day you said, Zach Martin has five or six holding calls in entire his career. Mm-hmm. Is that correct? Yeah, it's, he's got way more Pro Bowls than he has holding calls in his career. Holy moly. It's the that most. Awesome. It's probably the most fascinating stat uh, yeah. that never gets talked about. It's it's yeah, ridiculous. That is really my jaw drop. Yeah. So a uh, couple of things. Um, I I can. Uh, Give a nickname to our defense. Uh, it would be if I have to choose a name, it would be African Wild Dog, or they call it a Spotted Dog. And the reason for that is, if you ever watched any uh, show, as a group, they attack one at a time until they get the prey, and they take turns. They are absolutely. It's a very recent history. They've been video. It's just like they are so united, and the how they have this Cowboys defense play is is awesome. So, a uh, couple of things. Here's your trivia. Okay. I heard uh, your wife give you a hard time because of the uh, you remember Cowboys history, yeah. and uh, <laughs> you don't remember what they say. Right. So right. I want to give you and Chris a shout to uh, Chris for his birthday already. Okay. Uh, uh, give you a present. Uh, you can have a choice of any image for wildlife or landscape. So you can take home. So your wife says, where did you get this? She goes, well, I answered a trivia in Dallas Cowboys. Oh, I better get it right. Yeah. yeah. So it's, what I try to be fair with you, I went to the recent history because I know it's not fair to dig up all the older stuff. Cowboys had Seven quarterbacks are tied for five touchdowns in their career. Five touchdowns per game or game. So last quarterback, last three, 
are Dak, Tony, and Aikman. So, do you know how many touchdown, five touchdown game each one has? So, okay, so you're saying seven Cowboys? You're not you're not concerned with how many Cowboys have had five touchdown games, right? Yeah, no, no, that's it's not fair because it goes to 1960s. I don't want to go there. I know that I know who they are. Okay. But you just give me the last three. Dak, Tony, and Aikman. How many? How many? Do, five touchdown games do they have? Right. Um. Okay. I mean, I so can't. You can, you can answer. So you, I can hang up. So everybody else can. Call. Well, I think I think Aikman. I mean, I would say Aikman has one, and yes. I, would, I would say Romo has one, and maybe Dak two. No. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to give you a couple more again. Aikman is right. One. He has one. And Dak has one as well. Romo has. Tony has two. October 6, 2013. And Dallas then, was December. And the other one's Thanksgiving against the Bucks, uh, right? Was November, yes. The Dallas versus Tampa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I remember that one. Yeah. Okay. So who, are the, so who are the other four guys? Who are the other four guys going, going way back? Danny. Okay, the, the other one are... Um, Danny White, Danny White, Morton, Craig, no, uh, Morton, Meredith, and LeBron. Eddie LeBaron. Okay. Yeah. So, so no, no star back back then uh, with five touchdowns. No. That's pretty good. No. So uh, this is the this is the bonus question of okay. all the touchdowns. All these three, they have a game. They throw two touchdowns each per player. So if you name any of them, I'm sure you know. You mentioned it in one of the games the other yeah. day. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, any of them. So um, in, in the play in that uh, that game against the Bucks and on 2006, uh, Romo threw two to Marion Barber. Yeah. Uh, he threw two to Barber in that game, and then uh, Romo. I don't remember. Um, you said Romo had five in 2013. Yeah, uh, uh, I, I, that that game kind of slips me. And I, honestly, Dak's five touchdown game that was uh, January eighth, against, against the Eagles. Right, uh, yeah. man. I don't. I don't even. I, I can't even remember because he was throwing Cedric it. He, Wilson. He threw two touchdowns to Cedric Wilson. Well, oh, nice. Two to Stoltz, and one. To Corey Clement. Corey Clement. That's right. Yeah, that was the game that they were getting all kinds of guys were scoring touchdown. So good okay, stuff. so all right. today I'm in good mood. Um, Cowboys is going to win this week. I'm out of sport. They're going to kick ass. But ding, 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 ding. You, you and Chris, you both get the prize. Nice. You got my contact. Let me know if I'm wildlife or landscape for the house. It takes me four weeks to order it from New York, and I will send it to the address. And enjoy it, buddy. That's Thank awesome. You. Thank you. Good stuff. Appreciate that, Ali. All right. Um, yeah, we'll get back with you on that. Text question here. Jeff in Oregon. Better save Nate a piece of that cake. That's right. Nate Nate will, yeah, we got to say, he'll probably want a couple pieces there. Um, Anthony in L.A. Chris sounds a lot younger than he looks. Uh, happy birthday. What's that mean? Man, that's a shot. What's that mean? Anthony was a shot. Maybe, maybe you sound nine. Or something, or 14, and you look 21. I, I get that a lot. Cool. Um, he also said Cowboys win 24-17. We got another caller, Joe, in New York. Hey, what's up, Nick? How you doing, man? Let's go, Joe, man. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. Doing great. First, I just want to say, uh, man, I've been listening to you for for as long as you've been with the Cowboys, man. So I want to just thank you and Chris for what you guys do. Appreciate I mean, that. I listen every single day, man. So you guys are awesome. I appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, I could talk to you guys for hours, so I'm just going to try to make this kind of short and sweet. I've been trying to get on for a really long time. I've never been able to. Uh, I'm 33 years old. I'm the youngest of four, and um, I'm a Cowboys fan because of my, my one of my older brothers. And he actually passed away about two years ago. We went to – and I still go, but we um, used to go to every season opener – since I was, you know, I can't even remember when. I still don't now. I take his son oh, to, to, uh, to, to the season opener. So, uh, man, it, it just it just feels different this year. Like, you know, 
I watch, I've never missed a Cowboy game, and I mean, you just get that feeling, you're like, oh, man, they're not going to do it. They can't. I just, this year, man, I just feel like this is it. And uh, it's got to get done. This is the team to do it. Got to do it for my brother. Got to do it for all Cowboys Nation. And uh, that's really all I got to say, man. And like I said, I could ask you questions and talk to you forever, but let's go Cowboys. Oh, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. Uh, appreciate the call. That That's touching. It is to me for sure. Um, um, uncle of the year, um, for, without a doubt, because uh, you know that's just for you to honor your brother like that and 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 carry on traditions. You know, traditions matter, and uh, and for you to do that, I mean that that's that's special. That's special to me, and um, I'm, I'm sure it's special to to uh, your, your nephew and and and, and your, all your family like that. So I love the attitude. I love the confidence. Um, and uh, yeah, man, it's uh, it's time. Like you said, it's time. They're really, we really are running out of words. I mean, it's just time to play the game. Let's just let's let's play the game. Let's see if they'll move it up uh, 24 hours and maybe get Green Bay in here. Let's just play the game. All right, Josh in Chicago. Josh, what's up? Hey, Nick, how you doing today? I'm great. How you doing, man? Oh man, I'm anxious. I'm I'm anxious. ready for Sunday. I you know, know. Yeah, everybody is. I know. Yep, I'm just ready for this game to be on, ready for the playoffs. You know, you you only get one at a time now. So, no, it's gonna be um, it's gonna be a lot of nervous energy in that stadium. It's gonna be electric, though, without a doubt. Oh, definitely. I keep thinking back to one thing, especially with the Packers run game, is uh, last season when Micah and them were talking about, hey, we have to earn the right to rush the passer, mm-hmm. and I think that that's gonna be key to this game is they got to earn that. But I think they can, and uh, hey, I'm ready to go. Like, let's go, Cowboys. Yeah. Yeah, let's go. Um, you know, you, you got to tackle them. Those receivers, you know, they got some speed, but uh, you know, when, when they throw it out there, and they you know, they're going to get the ball out quick. We know that. Um, but the thing about Green Bay is they do like to take deep shots, and to do that, you've got to kind of stand in the pocket a little bit. So um, we'll see if he's willing to do that. You know, if 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 they can block long enough to 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 do that and 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 to take those shots uh, down the field. So. Yep. The only other thing I got to say is, hey, sees everything, right? Sees everything. That's right. We got yep. T-shirts. They gave the T-shirts to all the employees yesterday. Sees ev- everything. So that's um, they're 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 getting everybody's excited. I think you saw some of those shirts. Maybe if you were watching Talking Cowboys, they had that on. Um, oh yeah, I'm gonna well. get one of my own. All right. Cool. I love all right. it. All right, Josh. Appreciate that. All right, good stuff, guys. Um, Chris, uh, thanks, thanks for the call, call, Josh. And uh, I think we're done with the callers today. We're pretty much. I got, got one more for you. One more? Okay. Yeah, I got one more for Let's you. Let's do it. Champ in the 308. That's Nebraska. Okay. That was the caller. Champ. Hey, Nick. What's up, How man? you doing? I'm good. Let's get that Not first much. time caller. First time for sure, right? Go. Go. First time. What's going on That's in awesome. Nebraska? It is snowing. I actually have my third snow day from work this week. So while I'm enjoying the snow, I'm hoping that Green Bay fans that are trying to make that trip can't. <laughs> so, yeah, well, but no, I, I just I, I've been wanting to call. I, I've enjoyed. I, I actually texted you earlier this week about. I hit my question was about your favorite book. Oh, okay. Um, thank you. And yeah, absolutely. But no, I just wanted to call and say, you know, I'm a diehard Cowboys fan. I was kind of listening to the guy earlier that was talking about his dad losing his dad. Yeah. Fortunately, I still have my dad. But that's my highlight. Every Sunday, I go watch the games that my dad were with my dad. You know, at home, I have a big projector screen I could watch the games on. I choose to go sit with him, watch him. He raised me as a Cowboys fan. That's awesome. And I'm never going to forget that. I'm going to cherish every opportunity I can to watch those games with him. I can't wait for Sunday. It's supposed to be negative 13 here. It feels like negative 30. But I promise you, I will be at my parents watching the game with them. Wow, that's that's great. Yeah, you got to do that. You got to carry on the tradition, like we said, and absolutely. Just hope, just hope absolutely. Just hope no power outages or anything like that. Uh, with, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Sorry, knock on wood. I can't forget my brother. My brother is there with us all the time too. He's just as diehard as all of us, and he's always there too. Cool. So, so yeah, we'll definitely be there. I'm just looking forward to um, the game this weekend. I. I just have positive feelings, good. good vibes. I think that that it's going to be good for us, man. I'm ready for it. Right. 28 years has been a long time. Long I'm not time. trying to get ahead of myself, but I, I haven't felt this positive about a team 
in a few years. Yeah. It'll be let down in the past, but but I don't know. I, this team is different. Hey. I think they're built different. Yeah. Well, I mean that's that's why that's why we do it. We we you know you, you've earned the right to get excited because you're you're there with every game. You watch the you watch the draft. You watch the preseason games. You you look at you know you probably go on the websites and and getting all the the stories. It's it's all for this moment, so you can get excited about your team. And then if they get let down, you get let down. I mean that's 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 part of it. But for me. I don't. I don't worry about that. Like, oh, what? A, I'm gonna be hesitant. I'm not gonna. You're not gonna fool me again. Now, nah, that's what being a fan's all about. You just go all in. You go all in, and and you know if it doesn't work out, then you get sad and you get upset, and then you're like, I'm never gonna watch the Cowboys again. I, I'm tired of this team. I'm gonna get all my stuff. Who are we drafting? That's 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 how it, that's how it goes. That's the cycle. It's a vicious cycle, but that's what happens. We did get a call from Rob in Vegas. He just called to wish Chris a happy birthday. And he said 38-16. He didn't get in, but he he was just calling really just to just to kind of get in and wish Chris a happy birthday. That's pretty awesome. Glad to hear from uh, from Rob on that. This is the birthday cake that we got, Chris. Happy birthday to Chris Beam for all the stuff he does. Appreciate that. Appreciate all of you guys as well. And uh, we still got our ten callers in. We got to uh, have Chris on the show. So if you just joined us and didn't see that, you got to go back and, and watch that on YouTube. Go back and watch that and and check out our. Birthday shout out to Chris Beam. All right, stay with us on uh, Dallas Cowboys Radio because we got Cowboys break coming up here in just a minute. So, for the birthday boy, Chris Beam, I'm Nick Eatman. We will talk to you guys next week. Got to get on the website. We'll figure out what the schedule is going to look like. We might have some shows Monday. It's going to be holiday and uh, weather and all that kind of stuff. But uh, you'll definitely hear from us for sure next week, hopefully talking about a Cowboy win. We'll see you next week on Cowboy Storyline. How about him? has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!